good morning today we are going to talk about plasma membrane so first i will define what plasma membrane is plasma membrane is a semi permeable lipid bilayer that encapsulates or surrounds a cell it designates a cell differentiates a cell from its surrounding whether we are having any animal cell or plant cell both of these cells they have plasma membrane currently we have very well established structural model of the plasma membrane where we know the orientation of different groups proteins carbohydrates lipids phospholipids and how they are oriented how they are located into this lipid bilayer but that was not the situation so we will review different models of the plasma membrane based on the evidences present at that time how different models were portrayed by different scientists if we go back to the history in 70th century there was the invention of light microscope light microscope was a very simple microscope and under microscopy it was found that cellular uh, life forms they have very intricate structures then skildian and sichuan skildian he was a botanist and sichuan he was a zoologist they together simultaneously they said that plant or animal tissues they are composed of individual cellular units similarly robert hook he looked at the slice of cork or bark and he found a honeycomb structure in 1858 virchow stated cell theory so from all these evidences it was clear that a cell is having its individuality because a cell is differentiated distinguished from its surroundings by a barrier but what is the nature of this barrier what is exact chemical physical by a uh, nature of this boundary we were not sure we were not known so a different series of experiments were performed in 1890s over tone he performed elegant series of experiments in those experiments he used cells like rbcs as an osmometer so he put a cell and then he found how different molecules they enter inside the cell so along with these molecules water molecules will also flow inside the cell they will make this cell bulge it so based on that he saw how these almost 500 molecules how they enter inside the cell he found two trends one of the trend was smaller molecules enter cell readily than large molecules if we are having a smaller molecule it will enter the cell very easily than if we are having any larger or bigger molecule second trend was rate of entry is directly proportional to molecular solubility in organic or non polar solvents and inversely proportional to their solubility in water so if a molecule is soluble in non polar solvents that molecule water insoluble barrier that boundary is water insoluble that is a somewhat solid structure which is uh, surrounding a particular cell so then it was an era of biochemistry so biochemists they isolated different molecules from the cells from the uh, life some of the molecules were lipids proteins carbohydrates okay then they measured the physical property of uh, these molecules like electrical resistance capacitance and they found that these 
property of the cell membranes where we in the range of isolated lipids okay so these physical properties of biomolecules and cell membranes they were somewhat identical they were somewhat in the same range then langmuir he investigated surface property of lipid film he made a lipid film and concluded that lipids containing polar groups get oriented towards water and hydrophobic tails away from the water so if we put a lipid molecule having polar and non polar group the polar group will face the water and non polar things non polar tails they will hide from the water so gotel and grindel they based their findings based on the langmuir's experiment what they did they took red blood cells red blood cells are very simple structures they don't have endomembranes in our cellular system we are having other cellular organelles and those cellular organelles have membranes so it is very complicated system but red blood cells they don't have these endomembranes so whatever the membrane is there that is the plasma membrane so this is the red blood cells they use microscopy and took a fixed number of the cells and determined their surface area and from the same number of the cells <coughs> they extracted phospholipids what they found the surface area was lesser and the lipids phospholipids which were extracted from the same number of the cells those were twice that of the surface area from this they postulate an important finding that these lipids they are acting as lipid bilayer so lipids which our lipids are present in the uh, membranes of the rbcs those are oriented in the form of lipid bilayer so this is gotel and grindel's model of plasma membrane okay what they postulated what they proposed there is these lipids like we are having this phospholipid this phosphate group it's it is two tails fatty acid chains so they are oriented in such a way that phospholipids are from one side and phospholipids are from another side so they are making this lipid bilayer so this was gotel and grindel's model of plasma membrane although if currently we try to perform this particular experiment we won't be able to extract phospholipids as they have extracted and similarly the surface area that is uh, determined by microscopy will be the crude but two uh, crude experiments they were nullifying each other but they gave historical well known result that lipids are bilayer bimolecular layer, uh, layer of the lipids is present on the plasma membrane then then there were different revisions of the concept of the membrane wire bay and some of the experiments were done on starfish eggs so if we will press starfish egg under the cover slip we need less force to compress it than if it was lipid on so suggesting that the uh, membrane of the starfish egg it is not only lipid there might be some other constituents also similarly some other experiments were performed on the lipid film lipid film is where added proteins it is surface tension was decreasing and it was coming in the range of the membranes plasma membranes so these two experiments these two uh, these two findings led davidson and daniel to propose sandwich model of plasma membrane in 
as the word suggests in sandwich model of plasma membrane what they have postulated these proteins they are on either outer side or inner side of this plasma membrane and we are having inner region where phospholipids are there so this is daniel and davison's model of plasma membrane it is also called sandwich model of plasma membrane so uh, what were the evidences based on this daniel and davison proposed this sandwich model the evidences were simple if starfish eggs were pressed between cover surfaces we need less force than if it was only lip made up of lipids second thing was if lipid film we if on, onto the lipid film it will add proteins it is surface tension gets reduced and it comes in the range of plasma membrane so based on these evidences this daniel and davison they proposed that there are proteins also so they formulated that there is outer layer of protein and there is inner layer of the protein so and in between there is a hydrophobic zone okay so this they propose this outer hydrophobic zone made up of proteins and inner hydrophobic zone made up of proteins and then the central region it is hydrophobic zone but it is made up of phospholipids then further regions were made although sandwich model was simple it accounted for various property of plasma membranes then there was advancement in the technology electron microscopy came into existence and in electron microscopy when plasma membranes were observed under the beam of electronic electrical beam uh, electron beam so a trilayer three layered structure was found it was having two thick denser layers 2.5 nanometers separated by a clear 4 nanometer thick so it was like a rail so you can see over here this is acting as like a rail track okay so this was also almost it was this trilayer model it was similar to the sandwich model sandwich model also saying that outer protein layer middle lipid layer and then innermost protein layer so then further regions came unit model concept was proposed by uh, it was proposed by robertson in 1957 how they proposed this model they carefully examined preservation of outer and inner stained regions when stained regions of plasma membrane its outer regions and inner regions were carefully examined and it was found that it has difference in chemical composition of the outer and inner surface so they look like under microscopy once we they were observed that they might be chemically different so they propose a unit model concept of plasma membrane according to the unit model we are having uh this membrane is like acting as a unit we are having outer protein layer we are having polar uh, lipid hydrophilic regions then non polar tails and then we are having inner protein layer but the in unit model concept the protein which are in the outer side and the proteins which are the inner side they are different so that is unit model concept it was proposed by robertson based on the observation that plasma membrane the proteins which are on the outer leaflet and the inner leaflet of the plasma membrane they are different so he postulated this unit model of plasma membrane uh then there was advance in microscopy and biophysical techniques during 1960s that led to the revision of the unit membrane concept okay free structure techniques allowed microscopists to visualize particles in the interior hydrophobic region of the membrane 
so by free structure technique it was found that there were some particles which are not only on the outer side but they are on the inner side hydrophobic region of the uh, lipid bilayer similarly magnetic circular dichroism demonstrated membrane proteins are globular in nature with both hydrophilic and hydrophobic regions so if a protein is hydrophilic we can understand that protein will lie on the outer side towards the cytoplasmic side of the membrane or outer towards the outer peripheral side of the membrane but if there are some proteins which have hydrophobic region so obviously those proteins should be present between these uh, fatty acid chains so so then other techniques also demonstrated that this membrane is behaving like a three dimensional fluid so that lead to the fluid mosaic model of plasma membrane which was proposed by singer and nicholson in 1972 so according to fluid mosaic model it ha membrane has asymmetrical lipid bilayer as was proposed in the unit membrane concept outer leaflet proteins lipids they possess they are somewhat different they possess carbohydrates like we are having glycolipids okay we are having carbohydrate residues at is from the outer side and these proteins which are inner side which are the cytoplasmic peripheral proteins they don't have carbohydrates this outer layer of the lipids which is formed on the plasma membrane is called glycocalyx so the thing is fluid mosaic model also suggested like unit membrane concept that membrane is asymmetrical in nature what do you mean by asymmetry of membrane asymmetry of the membrane is that the proteins which are present on the extrinsic uh, outer leaflet of the plasma membrane and the proteins which are present on the inner leaflet of the plasma membrane those are different phospholipids which are present on the outer leaflet and the phospholipids which are present on the inner leaflet of the plasma membrane those are different okay this plasma membrane it has two leaflets we are having phosphate and two hydrocarbon chains we are having another phosphate and two hydrocarbon chains so this one is one leaflet and this one is another leaflet we can say this is outer leaflet and this is inner leaflet asymmetry is there it is not the same from both sides outer side and the inner side that is asymmetry because on the outer side most of these proteins or lipids they have attached carbohydrates so we are having glycolipids and uh, glycoproteins from the outer side of the membrane okay similarly uh, so this is a phospholipid it has a polar head then it has a glycerol molecule and to that glycerol molecule two fatty acid chains are attached so they are formed two layers outer leaflet and inner leaflet second thing in fluid mosaic model is that we are having extrinsic proteins those proteins are also called peripheral proteins and we are also having intrinsic or integral proteins extrinsic proteins are those proteins which are present on either on the extracellular side or on to the intra cytoplasm side of the membrane so they are towards the periphery so those proteins are called extrinsic proteins or peripheral proteins then we have other proteins also called as intrinsic proteins or integral proteins these proteins are embedded into this hydrophobic region so those proteins are intrinsic proteins some of the proteins which would be over here between these fatty acid chains those will be called intrinsic proteins and 
these proteins, these phospholipids and these extrinsic proteins, they can move all along the surface of the plasma membrane. So, they are showing fluidity. Some of the proteins, they can flip flop. They can occasionally move from outer leaflet to the inner leaflet. So, that movement is also there. That is called flip flop movement of the phospholipids or proteins. So, this membrane, it is acting as a three dimensional fluid. And in this membrane, whatever phospholipids are there, whatever proteins are there, they are showing different types of motions, rotational motions. They move along the plane. So, this is fluidity of the membrane. So, isolation of biological membranes. If we talk about the membrane, so we have to isolate the biological membranes. Isolating a membrane is very difficult. One thing, one thing is important. If we will take RBCs and we can get very good membrane from the RBCs because RBCs have only one membrane called as outer membrane, outer plasma membrane. And they don't have any other endomembrane. Uh, protoplast of unknown cell is always, uh, plant cell is always continued by cell wall components. If we take the plasma membrane from plant cell, there are the chances of getting contamination from the cell wall. So, density gradient centrifugation then came and in density gradient centrifugation, we are able to get different plasma membrane components and isolate them and study them. And uh, once we are isolating different biological membranes, we can assess the purity of a membrane by different enzymes because every membrane has this particular enzyme which is specific to that particular membrane. Like plasma membrane, we are having sodium potassium ATPase. Lysosomes, we are having acid phosphatases. So, that helps us in telling the purity of the membrane. So, uh, these peripheral proteins, which are present on the leaf light, outer leaf light from the peripheral side or inner leaflet from the cytoplasmic side, these proteins, they are attached by ionic interactions. We can dislodge them, we can remove these proteins by increasing hydrogen ion concentration, by increasing the pH. So, we can dislodge very well these proteins. While as integral proteins, the protein which is inside this lipid bilayer, which is very well embedded or transmembrane protein, we cannot dislodge that particular protein because that is part and parcel of the plasma membrane. We can dislodge that protein if we use detergent because detergent will destroy whole plasma membrane. I hope you understood this lecture. We will continue further on plasma membranes. Thank you so much.